so we're going to be reviewing a brand new 895 Sport. Look of, at that behind of, us. Of sure. Do you know Mary Fisher? Really looking forward to this. Yeah. Um, as you all know, we used to have an 895, and it's going to be really exciting to be looking at uh, a newer model. Um, it's and got, the Sport. And the Sport. Come with us, and uh, we'll give you a, a detailed tour. Absolutely. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Come on, let's have a look. So let's start. Uh, let's show you around the outside to start with. Um, you'll see straight away that the uh, swim ladder is slightly different to our 895 offshore in that it's back to that system where um, it concertinas up um, here and then goes up and slides into there um, like that which is i quite like that r1 comes over the top here and fits onto these uh, or fitted into a recessed area here but they've obviously changed it very slightly just to fit it underneath there and i like that change uh, that's quite uh, quite a good change that um okay the f uh, and of course because we're on the 895 range we've stepped up from a single to a twin um, we're here at this fabulous dealership espace power in france who are mercury um, engine suppliers so um, ours had a couple of yamaha 200s this has got two mercury 225s a couple of lovely beasts there i do like the um the sort of styling of the mercury i actually think it's slightly better than the yam um but um but uh, a stack of power there on the back for you um, and very similar to the offshore or 895 mary fisher version um, is the power is your if i can open it up here there we go um just a quarter turn on that and that's your shore power inlet there the sport obviously um you can see straight away is different to uh to the 895 offshore we had this is an offshore version um but of course this one is um similar to the marlin as well because it's all about fishing this one um, much more emphasis on uh, on a fishing boat be it day fishing be it out for a weekend but really well set up of course <laughs> an obvious clue there with the multiple rod holder at the back which we'll uh, see more of in a minute but um, but yeah very much about fishing our 895 offshore was um, was more of a sort of family type cruising boat um, not so geared towards uh, towards the sport of fishing but as we go through the boat you'll see some of the changes they've made to uh, which really help it uh, help it be uh, an excellent boat for fishing as well of course as a very nice boat for pottering out and about in wherever you are in the world um, do like the red and black edition like that the little white outlets there those will be for your various um, bilges um be for your sink outlet stuff like that um and uh, then you'll see once we get inside you'll see that a lot of this bit here which is to the naked eye that just looks like another decal is actually um is actually a form of glass um privacy glass and gives some uh, really nice light areas in the cabin at the front there which we'll see when we go and have a look inside the boat um but you can see a pretty imposing Thing she is too at nearly uh, nine meters um, you'll also see that um, you've got your bow thruster there at the front um, which are really useful bits of kit and in fact the combination of the bow thruster and the twin engines at the back when you're using them um, in opposing directions so let's say the starboard in forward the port engine in reverse together with your bow thruster makes it a very very maneuverable boat despite its size and its weight um, the specification of which i'll uh, will have stuck on the screen for you to give you an idea of its size and weight etc but despite that the uh, two engines and the bow thrust to give it that amazing maneuverability um, which you can literally take the boat sideways forwards you can turn it in a circle on the spot um, and uh, it's a fantastic fantastically maneuverable boat and there you go that's a look down the uh, port side there again your outlets here that will be uh, from your anchor locker i should think 
uh, all the one at the front there bow thruster from this side you see your um, see your lifting points up there marked again by Jeannot a uh, little porthole window there that's probably the second cabin on the inside some more of your outlets there bilge outlets and those lovely uh, 895 sport Mary Fisher decals that they've added to the back there incidentally there if you were down this part of the world there is the um, telephone number there for SBAS Power who have been so good in allowing us to uh, have a look at these absolutely stunning boats which I'm thoroughly enjoying um, here while we're still on the outside you'll probably no notice straight away is our Lenko trim tabs um, Lenko mark there these are sort of hydraulic rams here which are electronically controlled from the helm station and uh, they work either either in unison with each other um, or opposing each other indeed um, to stabilize the boat as you increase in speed um, it they help you to optimize the position in the water that the boat that the boat is sitting so that in effect it's skimming across the surface um, so if you've got weight for example if you've got more weight on the port side of the boat you might have adjusted your port side or your starboard side Lenko trim tabs to just help to equalize the weight so that the boat sits at its optimum fuel to uh, speed ratio and there will be and it's sort of trial and error that will get you to the point where you'll know what the optimum litres per hour will be when the boat is absolutely singing flying along skimming across the surface trimmed beautifully and you'll have that ultimate consumption where you've you know where everything's running right and you're your most efficient uh, and effective fuel consumption uh, but these two big twin mercs here lovely bit of kit these stainless steel propellers um, and uh, there's your water inlets here sucking your water gear leg of the engine here coming up through and then the monster four stroke mercury 225 uh, under there you can see here as well you've got your uh, hydraulic rams there for this uh, for to lifting your engines up out the water and um, so that uh, hopefully if it was anything like the two yams that I had when we were in the marina you could get the engines uh, literally bar about literally about quarter of an inch the, the right the bottom corner of the gear leg used to touch the uh, water surface um, when we were sort of more than half full of fuel uh, if we were less than half full then the engines would actually be completely clear of the water which if you're moored in salt water as a lot of you will know um, is a good thing to have the engines out because if they sit in the salt water they build up weed and barnacles and goodness knows what and in fact we found you know that when we lifted our boats out of the water there was always uh, barnacles and god knows what that started to form on this which is a reason why you would be lifting your boat out on a relatively regular basis to uh, blast it off and get rid of some of the marine life that's um, grown attached to it literally grown attached to it um, right let's go on uh, and have a look um, or let's just point that out as well you'll remember that um, R895 offshore if you've seen that film had that side access door um, they added that side access door to the 795 series 2 in fact there you go you probably saw it in one of the earlier shots but there's the 795 sport and again they've to the series 2 they added that side door because our original 795 uh, wasn't the sport just the standard one that didn't have a side door so that was a nice little addition um, but that's that is useful as well because uh, our boat was slightly too long for the marina um, finger so it meant that you know having a side door you could easily get on and off the boat okay uh, just as a point of note um, and there is a film on our channel about it but um, we opted and it was an option when we bought our boat uh, and i'm sure here in france it's no different but um, we opted for the zip wakes uh, i've got a film about the zip wakes on the channel if you wanted to know the difference between the two how the zip wakes work check out that film um, we thought them a bit better than the Lenkos, but I know you know everybody has uh, has opinions um, as to what might be or might not be better, or whether it's worth the extra money. But um, we felt it was a good investment and enjoyed using the zip wakes. They were they were fun. Um, check out that film. Okay, let's uh, 
Yeah, that's always very weird getting into a boat that's about 10 foot off the ground. Um, so we've plugged the shore power. You'll see as well that um, we've got some runners here. Um, this is because this whole um, unit here where the rods uh, holders are slides back. So when your engines are in their down position, which they aren't quite at the moment, but they are a fair way down, um, it allows this bit to slide all the way back right to the end of these runners here. Um, so that it creates a lot more space in the cockpit there um, and obviously conversely when you want to bring the engines right up this uh, this front of the engine here will tip right the way forward here um, to allow the gear legs to be uh, up out of the water so that's what those runners are um, and then here you've got um, a live well uh, which is the first hint that uh, it's all about fishing um, Live well, fill it with water, drain plug at the bottom there um, when you finish for the day. But that's where you can keep your catch lovely and fresh. Um, these, you see a number of these incidentally as we go around the boat, some more down there. These are just sort of ways that Genoa use to um, provide access into, into systems. I'll just see if this one comes off. Um, yeah, um, so all they do generally, take them out, you've got pipe work, you've got wiring you've got access into tanks various things they're just ways of uh, that the uh, mechanics fitters call them what you want um, can get to bits of your boat um, without having to take the whole thing apart um, uh, here at the back here you've obviously got your fuel um, now this one uh, unlike the WAs that we were reviewing here at the dealership um, this one has got twin fuel so you can see in exactly the same place over the other side You've got your second uh, second fuel filler cap. Again, this standard key system which operates for all the hatches on uh, port and starboard side of the boat. They all take the same key. Handy hint, always keep a spare one somewhere just in case it disappears. And there we go. So that's the way I came through there. What I've done there as well, um, the runners I was mentioning, I've uh, it is held in place by these two bolts, by one bolt there, and then uh, these two bolts down here, and then uh, I've just slid it back there, obviously carefully to make sure the engines were far enough down, which they are, because you can just see there the gap. Um, engines aren't fully down at the moment, but the uh, this is now in its fully back position, ready for these bolts to be dropped in here uh, and secured when you're underway. So uh, you can see now, you can start to get the feel of uh, the increase in space um, that that now gives you as a cockpit area. And of course you'll also see straight away with that aluminium pole and the wooden top that lo and behold, yes, this will be, um, this will be a removable tabletop um, to maximise your space in the cockpit area here. And there you go, that's with the uh, table now removed, just a simple pull out, no, no screws, no nothing. It just, um, it just pulls out there and the top just pulls off the, uh, off the post itself, so really quick and easy to, uh, to sort that out. You can see obviously there's a lot of the flexi teak on the deck here, that's often an option with these boats. Uh, is to have them over either as in just pure white GRP with a textured surface for, for a grip, uh, or you can opt to add uh, flexi teak surface um, to the decks. Uh, you can see I just left the side table there for a minute. To the side decks, uh, you can have it added to the front of the boat. So really, you can go, you can do as much or as little as you want. Um, in the corner there, you can see drainage uh, for water and the like. Of course, if you're uh, fishing um, and out to, out to, out deep water, um, you're going to get that. That's your water supply for your live well. And uh, then, as you've probably noticed already, as I've been showing you the cockpit, you'll see that there's a number of areas which are seating, which can lift up, um, and they simply come up like that. They just get hold of it at the back there. So, um, what? Uh, so, uh, some slight limitations in that uh, because we're at the dealership, in that a lot of the cushions are stowed away, so. I won't be able to get out probably a lot of the cushions to show you the full effect here, but hopefully you can start to see um, because these little clips here are where the strapping goes to hold the cushions on 
these metal clips here is where there are some similar little metal fittings on the back of the cushions that uh, slide into these that hold them in place so imagine your nice um, Genoa cushions there that you'll have seen in some of the other boats that um, on our channel my 795 my 895 you'll have seen those gray cushions um, so you can then and what we'll do we'll get this one out as well there we go uh, excuse the camera joggle us doing it one-handed and finally there um, so what you can now get the impression of is you've got the cushion covers on each of those all got those fittings I described you can see them all there the stainless steel fittings that take the back cushions the seat cushions then you add to it the table which at the moment I've just stowed around there then you add the table and you've got a really nice seating area at the back here um, you've of course got above us you'll have seen that they've got the canopy on here that um, is removable obviously you've got these adjustments here which allow you to uh, take the cover off and you see the hinging here allows you to um, to fold the uh, cover in fold the support in um, so that if for example you were in full fishing mode out the back here you wouldn't want casting to be affected by you know say the canopy over your head so it allows you to obviously therefore stow the canopy to give yourself maximum room out here to do what uh, to do what you love doing perhaps you're a bit of fishing um, you'll also see as well that this has got zips on it um, going all the way around um, so you can see therefore that um, you've got the ability to add sides to this so you can fully enclose you can see down here you've got bits here which are for the seat cushions but then also uh, when it's uh, in its forward position you'll see other fixing points which um, which the side covers would anchor to when they're zipped in around the top here so um, you know it could be potentially if you're uh, if you're moored up for the night anchored up for the night or if you're in your marina for the night um, getting a bit chilly you can obviously put the sides around and it's still a really nice outdoor space to uh, to have an evening meal out here of course as we go through the boat you'll see there's more space inside to eat as well um, okay so that's the seating you'll have to as I say imagine the cushions out on this occasion you'll see as well um, cup holders there you'll see uh, down there you've got your exterior shower so as you come in on your swim platform um, in the side there let me just get rid of this these which are actually really good to operate these little um, side seats you can see in here if I open it up this uh, this bit here they're fiddly little things these and it comes out on a big long hose you merely um, you merely touch this trigger here which activates the water um, fiddly to get back in but they eventually with a little bit of jiggery pokery go back in clips in so you can uh, clear off some of your seawater and um wash off your seawater uh, as you come in from your lovely swim out the back of the boat here just next to the shower in fact you've got your uh, you've got your seaworthiness plate um, you'll see that this is a category I don't know if you can see the fact they've added some figures here um, so it's because this is the offshore this is a category B for six people or a category C for ten people and uh, I'll just stick on the screen there what those categories mean if that's hard for you to see um, because uh, it's very lightly printed on there so I'll just stick that up on the screen to give you an idea of what those different categories mean um, but the offshore version takes it up into the category B area whereas the non-offshore version um, would remain C okay so that's that so let's get these other seats stowed away they're uh, easy to do there and this one there right so let's just move our shore power cable out the way and i can show you some of that some of that area for your fishing bits and bobs see there that can be your uh, washout area storage or it can be washout area if you've been uh, filleting or the like um, and of course multiple rod holders there rod holders at the sides um, there 
and there used to be and I'll check once we go up the front of this one but they sometimes had rod holders up on top as well for stowing your fishing lines when you're underway boat hook supplied by Jeannot in play not not its finished spot I hasten to add probably kept down below there or um, I've seen that uh, people fit the little boat hook so that it sits you know neatly against some of the framework of the boat there um, not stowed like that was here now there we go that's with the uh, cockpit locker opened up and you'll see straight away the uh, I mean even though this has got a fair bit of stuff in it you can see that um, you actually do need a ladder to get down in there um, it's a really cavernous size fantastic for storage we stored uh, a little 3d dinghy in ours um, together with other bits and bobs fishing gear um, we stored our torpedo electric engine in there um, it was absolutely brilliant it's a great space for uh, hiding away all your bits and bobs and again I've just come one foot down the ladder and you see the storage goes right back behind the ladder that I'm stood on here see you've got loads of room ours in fact had uh, slightly less space because it had a um, the heating system central heating system installed on the back wall here together with the exhaust and the other bits and it also had um, under the panelling under there it had the diesel tank for the heater um, so let's just see if I can move a couple of these bits and see what's under uh, under there for you you'll notice as well they've added that that's quite handy um, for it's a really great space for fenders this uh, ours actually didn't have these on the side um, so obviously as soon as you put your fenders in there your rope disappeared to the bottom so that's really handy you can wind your rope round so it's easy with the lid up just to get to your fender ropes to uh, to get them back out again yeah like that little addition okay and that's looking back the other way from the ladder so you can see it goes so we're looking towards the back of the boat here you can see how far back it goes absolutely loads this here not working obviously because we're not hooked up but this is a little strip light um, which gives uh, which gives really good light uh, again these catches here are the uh, just lift these out and then turn them and that gives you access into that looks like the back of the um, one of the port side fuel tanks there um, they're just other access points for mechanics and for the like um, You've got your uh, steering controls for your engine, you've got your fuel lines coming through the back here um, and all your other electronics. You've got your blue piping there which is the, um, which is the water supplies for your, uh, for your deck shower there and the like. Um, and there you can see at the back there the monster bolts holding, your, uh, holding some of your engine stuff in place there at the very back. Under these though you'll see that they've got little handles here, they've got like a catch underneath here so you have to give it a sort of a sharp pull upwards let's just try one handed, one handed to show you in so yeah another storage space there as i say ours used to have a 25 litre diesel tank there because it had central heating uh, on this 895 this one hasn't got it fitted but what it does have as well same as our one used to is you can see at the back there in yellow your bilge pumps both uh, manual and um, automatic the automatic obviously control from the helm station uh, and indeed some of the bilge pumps that uh, are fitted are actually water sensing ones as well so you don't even have to operate them if they sense water at the back they automatically cut in and uh, and pump it out so that's the, that's the one side of it let's just slide that into place one end of it. Yep. and let's give this one a little sharp pull because it just has to release it from that catch there that's why it needs a little sharp pull up and of course these are your batteries so um, generally two house one engine battery uh, massive bank of batteries in there and uh, plenty of power as I say we used to be on hookup all the time um, in the marina so we were always fully charged up um, and ready to go as it were um, I never actually we were never actually out for sort of you know four five six days in a row so if any of you have done that and have been out on the water for that sort of length of time more than say three or four days let me know in the comments below uh, how your battery is shaped up to that I guess of course if you're running the engines in the day and just moving from spot to spot then they're recharging anyway but if you were staying put um, and I guess of course it would depend on what you're running off your batteries of course um, as to how much power they're drawing but um, 
But yeah, uh, a good supply of power, certainly on the times we were away overnight in ours, um, we had more than enough to keep us going. So that's the cavernous area that is the cockpit locker, ladder included. Right, let's get some of this stuff back in. Things I do for you guys, look at that lot. It's about 31 degrees now. <coughs> and that's slightly warm. In fact, I could do with filling this with water and tipping it on my head. All right, that's everything back in. Look at those lovely brand new mooring lines, new, new fenders, all ready for the new owner. Right, let's get up and out. This obviously, as you see, is on uh, gas struts again, so it, uh, even though it's a really heavy cover, it makes the putting up uh, and putting down, it's assisted by those gas struts, so it comes down nice and gently, and then uh, you merely turn these turn these and then push them down to lock them in place lock them in place you'll see incidentally that uh, on one side only this side it's got a key socket they do lock and therefore it just uh, adds a little bit of deterrent to stop anybody lifting the hatch up easily there there we go table back in place seats up so that's the rear of the boat now let's start working our way forward so um You'll see uh, this uh, sliding door, single catch, goes right the way back. Same level uh, inside, just that slight sill to step over there. Very easy running door and a really nice feature, allows a lovely lot of air through, particularly when, as you see there, we've got the side door open as well, because it is particularly scorchio now, now that the uh, sun is full and truly out. Um, lighting up there, touch lighting again, um, those of course, well that one over there is inspection cover, speakers out the back here together with other lighting at the back, um, so you've got speakers outside and while I'm on the subject, speakers inside as well here on, uh, on both sides. Um, we did get with ours, uh, um, in the pack, all the bits and pieces you get, we did get four black speaker covers in so that we could actually interchange them if we really wanted to. Um, so anyway, that's the speakers. Um, through then uh, and it does provide this door does provide a lot of sandproofing if you're winding up those mercuries at the back um, but then shut this door it uh, does provide a lot of uh, good soundproofing so into the cabin itself you'll see um, it's a really nice size a couple of different levels in here which we'll have a look at in a second helm station this lovely sliding door which gives you nice easy access out there you see not much of a step over um, shuts there nice and easily locks in there so you can keep your boat nice and secure when you're away but as I say a lovely through flow of air in fact we'll open this back one because it is particularly scorchy at the moment here um, to get some air through um, so yeah really nice and spacious and of course uh, what we've also got on this one is We've got uh, a sunroof together with cover and together with fly screen as well. Um, and then to open these, it's just simply a pull down the bar, which is absolutely roasting hot. I can hardly touch it. Uh, there we go. It's just a bit, probably because of the heat, just a little bit sticky. I'll just open it about a third there. So you can see the combination of window, door, door, sunroof, you know, lovely flow of... Um, lovely flow of air particularly when it's uh, this hot down in the med um, upholstery wise uh, you can see here this one's in uh, here, just next to my bum bag there this is in white uh, or a whitish with a gray fleck um, as with most Genoa's you'll get choices of upholstery they've generally got let's say perhaps four or five choices may have a leatherette choice as well um, so uh, you can do all that Sort of negotiation in terms of your finish that you'd prefer uh, as well as things like this flexi teak i was talking about as you go with your uh, Chino dealer if you're buying it new um, you can also see here this table straight away you can see that obviously that hinges um, that allows a couple of things um, this area here and obviously i can't show you completely because i've got access to all the cushions and extras um, but you can see there's a recess there and there's also a little recess here and that takes a pole across there which then uh, you put another with this ledge here 
you put another piece in fill in which will be this tabletop so in effect it slides down it sits on a bar here sits on the ledge and then it's got more cushioning more cushioning in there that uh, makes this area here into a sort of well i wouldn't say a double but it's like a queen size sort of certainly a good size single might get a couple of kids on here in fact without a doubt but uh, probably struggle two adults but a really good size little area um, and then obviously you put the higher post in and it becomes uh, drops into its table mode um, underneath here you can see that you've got a lock there that just holds it in place uh, if you were going to stay as a table and there you go under there you can see these things here they push across and that's what holds this side of the table up so that uh, it stays in its table structure so that's that bit um, what you've also got as well of course with uh, this is let me just put this table back down again um, so what you've also got now that the table is got that bit folded down the reason why it's like that is because this then lifts up pulls across this uh, is obviously on a permanent sort of hinge bit here so it can flex either way and you've now got facing forward a really nice co-pilot seat next to the uh, next to the helms person who will be looking after the boat so yeah really nice when you're underway sit and watch the world go by we can get to this uh, get to this lovely mirror uh, lovely um, window here we still love sitting in this seat on a nice hot summer's day in Pembrokeshire out uh, at somewhere like Barrafundle, the beautiful Barrafundle Bay air through the cabin it was absolutely fab and a really nice place to sit when you're uh, when you're underway on the water okay so that's the uh, that's the co-pilot seat um, you'll also you'll also see this catch here allows you access look at that so slightly different, if you remember my walkthrough of our own uh, 895, you'll remember that the galley area was all sort of in this area. It was quite a quite an extensive bit with, um, you know, double, double burn and all that sort of thing. So on this one, because this is more about fishing, more about sport, um, then they've sort of uh, use the space um, I'd say probably even better in that uh, they've compacted a lot of the stuff um, so here obviously you've got your uh, you've got your hot and cold water hot water on here the uh, hot water tank will be sort of underneath us 10-15 um, litre hot water tank and here's your burner these bits these bits obviously fit on here to stop your pan sliding around when you're underway or uh, if you're at anchor and rocking around a bit um, just keep your pan or your kettle secure for the all-important cupper um, but that just stows away so that's nice uh, I like that uh, like that position nice and easy to get at and then just that single single clip there drinks containers there um, and then as we work around here um, we've got this area here which just lifts up there and uh, provides uh, that cover uh, over the top of the stairs and access as you go down. Uh, cover of course for um, you know if you're operating at the helm station perhaps got maps bits and bobs you want to spread out it's a really good surface for that um, and gives you a bit of extra space at the front of the boat here. Um, so as we're working across we might as well take in the helm station here at the same time. Um, <coughs> twin wipers on the front here controlled by these two switches here You've got a, wi a windscreen washers as well there you can see your um, Lenko trim tabs uh, to operate them down and up simple as that you can operate them simultaneously you can operate them independently of each other depending on uh, what you're trying to do with a boat tip it angle it if you've got more weight this side then you know you might just want to operate one of the Lenkos to try and even that out uh, again another chrome lined drinks container um, you've got on this one again good old Garmin lovely screen there really close profile on that um, again that probably looks like a 10 perhaps even a 12 12 inch and then because you're on uh, twin engines you get a slightly more uprated uh, sorry I can't actually show you it running uh, but a slightly more uprated and upmarket um, mercury control system together with the good old 
MSRA 70 which has been on all the boats we've looked at today and indeed on both of the ones that we had um, <coughs> so uh, so similar you can with the NMEA 2000 cabling you can link components together so that for example your uh, engine revs fuel whatever it might be can be displayed on here so that your radio can be displayed on here in an information bar at the top or bottom <clears throat> you can ask your dealer about that linking but most electrical components now that make up the helm station can be linked and you can have um, multi-display multi-function displays um, on the front here which is my of course you might choose to have a bigger screen um, where it's possible of course because obviously you're limited by the size uh, but it looks like you could potentially have a slightly bigger screen in this set um, which then um, which gives you really nice clear displays particularly if you're bringing across other units to display on your Garmin compass up the front there for your headings uh, and then in here again your standard 2.1 amp uh, USBs here is your sort of hardwired connection which goes direct into the uh, fusion so you can sort of run Apple Music stuff like that through your phone um, directly into your fusion um, and then out of the four speakers that we've seen that are behind me so that's quite useful and as well some of the um, updates as well perhaps you know you can also hardwire in updates for some of the electronics um, <coughs> So those are your, that's your radio there, that's your mercury rev counter there. Um, and then your bank of switches, you've got um, your anchor, horn, you've got your lighting, navigation lighting, you've got your um, shower water supply for your deck shower, your fresh water, your bilge pumps, you'll have midship bilge pumps and the ones at the rear that we've looked at already in the locker. Um, you'll have your switch here which isolates some of your electrical functions like the radio up here and things like that but not all so um, and lighting again there so yeah an array of switches differ from boat to boat but generally same sorts of things ignition switches for your port and starboard engines your kill cord um, which would be attached to you hopefully and in the case of you keeling over it you'd pull out your stop cord there and the engines would stop modern uh, electronics in here fly-by-wire system so no cabling no nothing like that um, and the ability to uh, interact the engines really easy I mean I can move these you know really nice ergonomically to move and to, to control if you wanted to move them forward or back or operate them against each other really nice into neutral there so yeah very nice setup there as you'd expect with those two fabulous 225s on the back um, equipped with this one equipped with a Garmin um, VHF radio of course um, we used to have a Garmin 215 AIS radio uh, this one looks very similar I don't think it's a 215 but it's very similar um, AIS obviously very good um, you know for positioning your your vessel with its uh, have its own unique number and therefore the coast guard and other people would have the ability to see you if required where your radio signal is um, and uh, uh, and then of course all the other functionality of the emergency channel of your local port channels of the ability to listen to more than one channel at once switches here that's for your roof spot um, you've got a toggle here which allows you to move it left down up and right left down left right up and down yeah that sort of you know what I mean anyway um, and, uh, and the on off switch there um, so that's a sort of look around at the cab the seat as well um, that's again you've got those options like a lot of Genoa boats in fact like you know almost all of the ones I've seen um, the ability to stand and have the bolster in the up position which I used to really like nice you can feet got great vision then and uh, can move around the boat or of course put the seat down uh, and a really nice sitting position you've got a foot rest there um, you've got some storage here as well for your nicks and nats for your charts for your all important you know emergency warning processes that you might have to go through if you have, have to call mayday we used to have pre-printed ones that nikki had typed up uh, with the name of the boat inserted in the relevant places so that if you ever got into trouble and had to call a mayday you just had to read straight directly 
from the chart and would uh, if you want to know any more about that let us know um, although in some of our other films on the channel you'll see some information about the bits and pieces we used to carry um, from a safety point of view um, steering again very similar very you know lovely light steering just uh, you can just see them just moving very slight movements of the wheel but responsive at the back there the twin engines um, over this side the all-important fridge um, that was very similar to our one in our, our own boat freezer compartments up the top there veggie bits stuff there some supports there to stop your bottles rattling around when you're underway really handy and then uh, these other bits over here are your where they've hidden some of your electronics um, you've got your uh, house batteries you've got your engine battery cutouts and um, you've obviously got your uh, isolator for your anchor if you wanted to isolate the anchor when you're underway um, all the usual sorts of things you'd expect to find um, here we've got a little bit of draw storage uh, a surface sort of recess surface there where you can put nicks and nacks bits and bobs you've got your water heater here as I say our t we had a 10 litre water heater which when we got to the boat we stuck the water heater on straight away and it only took about 15 20 minutes to heat up there you've got your power sockets those are French obviously because we're here in the beautiful south of France at Le Lavandou at um, Espas power dealership uh, but we had our French ones changed to um, English style because we were in the UK um, and your dealer would be able to do a similar change for you wherever you are in the world so that when you're on shore power or indeed if you've got a generator or whatever because the generator is an option for these boats um, then you would have three pin power um, wherever you are on hookup or not um, outdoor lighting um, for things like those lovely LEDs you can see um, just right down the bottom there and then all up the side uh, the steps of the boat there's lovely little blue LEDs um, and those are the controls for some of that and then we've got here just a little bit more storage you will recognize that box of tricks there hidden away in every Genoa boat is there little now let me guess chrome cleaner deck cleaner electrical tape and some cable clips do I get a prize if I've got it right cable clips chrome cleaner deck cleaner electrical tape hey how about that I think I should get a prize for that any suggestions as to what the prize should be you can put in the comments below only if they're clean comments of course <laughs> Um, yeah so that's those cupboards and then over the other side of the aisle here this will be probably a pull out one yes it is that was very similar to ours um, Nikki of course being the drinker that she was this was always full of wine a um, bit more storage down there but no she'll be laughing in the background because she actually doesn't drink um, but yes very handy for storage of many a thing in there um, and I think if you certainly on some of the American models I've seen that's one of the spots where they put a generator in there instead of a cupboard so um, that or under in the cockpit locker under there so that's uh, that's a look at uh, the interior here slidey door there lovely so let's go forward here um, and I guess just before we leave this area probably uh, as there was with ours have a look at our film you'll see that um, carpeting we had ours carpeted here and I'm sure it may be an option for this if you wanted it but of course if you've got a load of a load of fishing going on you might not want that because that uh, surface is probably easy to mop through and sort out after a day's fishing okay let's head down a couple of steps down into the two little cabins um, obviously again excuse the um, excuse the piles of cushions that are in these but I'll try and give you a better look as I can um, so here we got and I can't put the lighting on that was the little hatch that we saw from the outside opening hatch gets a bit of fresh air in there you can see the light switches there um, there will also be reading lights as well and um, head of the bed up this end your feet disappear off under there you can see See, it does go back a long way up. 
but uh, in effect it's the sort of width of the boat so it's a really good sized double um, without a doubt a double um, obviously though you haven't got much room to wander around in there um, and at the end there um, was is a panel um, both at the end and in the floor underneath those cushions um, where your fresh water tank where your hot water tank is where your black water tank access would be um, Again, because we're slightly limited with the, uh, you know, with them not being able to strip the boat out completely um, because we're in the good hands of the dealership here. Um, do have a look at my um, other 89 film, uh, 895 film, the one we owned, where I've gone into those areas at the back there and uh, show you some of those spaces which are similar to, uh, to this boat. Um, but suffice to say, there's lots of little storage areas. That bit just lifts up there. Um, at the back here, that's an addition to the ones that we had. You've got storage down the back here, just a little narrow area here where you can put nicks and nacks and obviously the curtain runner comes across there. Um, you've got a three pin socket there, or obviously French on this boat. Um, more light switches up there. Um, and then, and I'm obviously sat on it on a little bench that they provide for you there. Um, again, this bench um, with the door here, this bench has also got a, let's just come out and spin around. Um, has also got a little storage area there, which you can just, just see into there. So, very standard it is for the Genoa boats to have these little circles of Velcro, Velcro on the underside of the cushion, and then they just push down and hold in place, so very easy to move the cushions in and out if you need to. Um, that's access obviously to your um, underside of the cooking area, uh, your gas supply here coming in, your gas feed gives you access to that. Um, so that's your second cabin in effect. In the hallway here you've also got a little lift up area. This um, is your windscreen washer bottle. Um, you can see there the various pumps, that's your shower pump under there and the blue piping and stuff is your uh, fresh water system around the boat together with the red of course being the hot water um, from your small um, hot water container. Uh, you've got uh, day heads here, mirror provided there, um, pumpable Jabsco, seawater obviously pump. It's also got, you'll see this back to it here, um, so in effect it becomes a seat and the reason that is is because if I wheedle my way in here and shut the door so it'll be the last time you ever have a shower with me I can tell you but um, we can see now that this has got a gasket around this door here because obviously this tap pulls out here and up above should be up above me yes oops and spin around up above there you've got the place where you clip in this um this so this tap now becomes a shower now becomes a shower head um, so in effect you can have a sort of full sit down shower you've got hot water um you've got a sink here you've got um another area here with a plug hole as well um so really you've got um everything you need um to have a shower there's your switch for the um shower pump so that uh, everything that disappears out this tray here goes in uh, and that switch there operates that shower pump that we just saw under the uh, under the steps outside there. Um, some storage. Well, I don't know so much about storage, but access to uh, access to pipe work. Um, but yes, I'm um, obviously there is some storage in that they've supplied a toilet roll holder there and you could probably get some bits and pieces in there if you wanted to. Uh, spare this and that. Um, so that's a bit of that. This, um, if any of you have watched my other films of the uh, of the eight nine five, then you'll know that this uh, these two clips drop down, and there, look at all those goodies. Um, there is the supply of goodies that is most of your electrics on the boat. Obviously, the underside of the. Uh, let's just put that down gently. The underside of the. Um, Garmin, your chart plotter there. Um, there's all those feeds there for the uh, 
NMEA 2000 wiring. This is some of the trunking for the wiring as well to link in some of those peripherals into the chart plotter itself. So it looks like this boat has been fitted with it. There's the back end of your radio. There's the Mercury um, control center there. So you can see um, an absolute maze back here. Um, but relatively easy to access, to be fair, you know, if you've got to change fuses or locate stuff. Um, that's obviously your steering controls and your steering cables coming in and out for left and right. Um, so yeah, I mean, once you've had a mooch round, um, it's, uh, it's fairly self-explanatory. And of course, oops, on the back there, you can just see you've got a, a whole diagram as to, as to what, all the, um, what all the clips are. All right, let's put those back on. Yeah, uh, light switch in here, touch switch as well, so plenty of light, tower rail fitted there, um, and, if, and if you really need it, a lock on the door. Let's just hope I can get out, yep, there we go. Stuck in a toilet in the south of France, nobody would ever believe me in a boatyard. Um, okay, so what we got under here, a uh, little bit of storage. Again, good old Genome, they put uh, really good at finding all the little nooks and crannies where you can keep bits and pieces. Um, but then obviously this has given access into the into this slidey door here, which bolts in. Let me just push that bolt up, there we go. So it's a sort of two-piece door there, you can see. So it opens this one, both quite narrow. Um, drop that lock, top and bottom. And there you are, into this forward area here. Um, now, uh, on the 895 offshore that we had, um, you will see straight away that um, that had a much bigger sort of master cabin, if you like. So again, a bit like I was saying at the beginning of the film, this is about fishing, about sport, less about, you know, staying on leisurely uh, punts around and weekends away. <clears throat> Very much focused on sport and therefore this area, not as palatial, if I can use that word, as Queen Nikki's uh, bedroom that she had in uh, Resi the 895. Um, but nonetheless, a nice space. It's got um, those really nice long windows that I talked about from the outside. Um, it's got some space down here for your nicks and knacks, bits and bobs, um, but much less head space. We used to be able to walk around our um, double sized, uh, really good double sized bed. Um, this one is obviously um, has got infill piece here once these doors are shut and out the way like that you've obviously got a piece that would um that would fit in here you can see that slight little lip there and and this would either become two single berths one that side and one where i'm sat or the infill piece then would uh, perhaps allow it to become one one big uh, one big space um got a mirror up there got a nice bit of light though coming in I must say from these side windows and from this little window at the front here uh, and from this window up there you know it's really nice uh, really nice light space here despite its sort of fairly cramped nature um, these bits um, are bits that uh, make up the sort of front sun pad and stuff like that so my apologies once again uh, for all these sort of extra cushions but you can see again the upholstery here uh, under the upholstery again we've got uh, some more of those hatches that we know and love from Genoa for storage and again at the front here you've got again a hatch which would be access to the bow thruster and the bow thruster battery and the electronics for that um, under there so very similar from Genoa to Genoa they use the space really well um, but there aren't many options when a boat's in a yard or out in the elements or in storage. There aren't many other options than to have all the external cushions on the inside. Um, OK, this one, incidentally, as you can see here, the underside here, when I go up front of the boat, that's got a nice hatch here, actually, which opens up, which means that it's actually quite easy to get a lot of the sun deck cushions out the front um, from in here and vice versa to get them back in rather than having to go all the way to the back of the boat to come in and get them into here. So, yeah, that would definitely make life easy because you do have to keep putting your cushions in and out if you're going to look after them. They stand a certain amount of weather, this, this material, but um, to keep ours sort of in good condition, certainly in winter, you know, we would have them uh, inside um, with the uh, dehumidifier working so they don't get, um, you know, so they don't get mouldy or damp or um, deteriorate. 
Um, I might just be able to show you though, if I can. Yeah, I think I can get into that. So a little wardrobe here, only small, but you can see you have actually got yourself a little wardrobe rail there. And a reason for that, a hanging space, quite tight. Um, but uh, nonetheless accessible, get a few things hanging in there, no problem at all. Um, lighting in here, you've got these little clips here which allow you to fit a sort of curtain awning on the underside of this um, and, uh, and give you a bit more privacy if you need it and similarly these ones here also allow you to fit a piece of curtain over there um, on those little elastic hooks which then allow you to get some privacy from the uh, outside windows. Okay, um, I think we've got everything there, yeah, and there's, in fact, that's probably what I can just about get to. And there, you've got, yeah, you've got storage in there under, yet yeah, more of those, uh, more of those great Geno Covey's holes. Okay, so that's the inside. Let's make our way back up and take you out the front of the boat. And we'll go out, because we can, we'll go out the side door. So you can see that, um, got black water pump out there. Um, and uh, so depending on where you are, might mean you have to have black water pumped out, or there are certain places, countries, wherever, where you can actually there uh, just drop it out the bottom of the boat if you're far enough out to sea. Um, these two bits here are your fuel cutoff, fuel line cutoffs in case of emergency, um, and the all important drinks holder next to you here. And so let's make our way up the front. These are um, these are really good height. These they're up to sort of I swing the camera around, sort of see you know it's right up to my waist there. So really good height railings as you come out onto the deck here. So a nice safe route to take. Um, and the reason why obviously you sacrifice a lot of the room below in the in what would have been the master cabin in our boat is because you have this lovely additional area which I actually like because uh, let's face it you know you're going to be trying to get out in really nice weather so uh, if you've got more areas uh, if you've got people fishing at the back perhaps and others want to just chill then you've got another whole area here where and you'll see them you'll see these the hooks the slidey bits the clips for the straps um, yes you've guessed it uh, all of those cushions that were in the bedroom below they all fit in up here the steel framework that we saw on the bed fits into this section here on these ledges and uh, another sun pad fits on top of that again um, uh, I keep pointing you to other films on the channel but but it does explain it well uh, we had a similar steel frame set up at the rear of our 895 um, so if you checked out that film you'll see exactly how that works um, fits into this area has a whole um, set of cushions which make this whole thing here a sun pad which is absolutely fantastic I love that and in fact I like the fact that sat there you've got the upright seat there you've got if I sit down ooh, on there look at that so I'd uh, I'd quite happily sit out here um, as we cruised not in a not in a Espace Powers boatyard but um, as we cruise somewhere in the med where I am at the moment, which will be absolutely stunning. Uh, never been boating in the med, so I might have to do that. Oh, bit of mechanic work going on over there. Sorry about the noise. Um, so let's have a quick look out what else we've got. We've got our good old anchor locker, our trusty Lumar anchor there, um, windless I should say. Um, got the little locking key there. You've got your um, ratchet there to lock the uh, lock the winch in place um, if you want to know you've got your s safety clip there fitted onto the anchor chain if you want to know anything more about anchors lumar anchoring safely anchoring your boat check out the other film on our channel which um, which hopefully um, explains it um, in uh, common sense terms how to uh, how to use all this equipment um, good size anchor locker chain you can probably get some fenders in there as well you've got here's your remote control for your um, for your lumar uh, you've obviously can control it from the helm station as well but you know i personally uh, always like to be up the front here rather than in the cabin back there 
Um, I'd like to be able to see, you know, if the anchor chain was running out all right, wasn't snagging on anything, um, was coiling up all right if we were bringing the anchor up. So I always used to, uh, Nikki um, or I used to be at the helm and one of us used to be up here using the remote to, uh, to bring in the anchor or to deploy the anchor. Um, that would be probably for the manual handle, which doesn't seem to be here, but um, if this was to fail, then normally stowed in there is a manual sort of key, which slots into this bit here um, and it allows you to manually wind up or drop down uh, the anchor uh, so that's what would normally be stored in this bit here all waterproof up here so you can if you've been anchored out at sea salt water in here you can hose the whole locker down get some fresh water in there get rid of the salt um, just to look after the boat a bit um, and that's uh, that's a good space with that little hydraulic strut there to uh, to help you lift and lower it. Um, the anchor the anchor itself obviously sits just slightly off centre there um, and the reason why it does obviously is because they wanted to, Genoa wanted to maximise this um, entry to the boat here so it gives you lots of space to get in um, at the front of the boat. Um, if you're marina takes you in front ways then obviously you can see the front of the boat would be nicely up at your marina edge and uh, you'll be able to get it in get it on or off your boat from the front um, there's your gas locker pipe work of which we saw further back where the little kitchen area was up the front here and this one again one of these lockable turns just a quarter turn and there we go your um that's your dead easy access because when you do have to get all your cushions in from this lovely area here, uh, it's actually made it really easy to get them in through the hatch there. So that's great. Gas struts again to help you lift that. Wow, and they're really strong gas struts. And then a quarter turn to lock it in place. Drinks holders, drinks holders. There's that window that we saw in the main cabin down below windscreen washers there um, but what a great space now on top here um, got a number of options you can see here this lighting here these are like big massive LED spots that's really useful uh, if you want to light up the area where you might be fishing you've got uh, you can have the additional supports there for your Garmin radar um, you've got your spotlight that we saw the controls of inside together with the VHF aerial of the VHF radio there's the horn at the back. You can also have, speak to your dealer about it, you can have these side rails put on there which allow you then to fit this lovely roof rack for your stand-up paddleboard, for your uh, dinghy, for your weight boards, whatever it might be. Um, we had a similar system, I made a similar system for our 7i5 and then we had some uh, rails on our 8i5 and it were really useful for the kayak and for other bits and bobs for storage. So that's your roof section, of course to, you can mount whatever else you might want to on those back bars as well. Um, and that's your roof area. Okay, let's head back down. Side incidentally, this side you can see different that side, a lot shallower, a lot, uh, I mean yes you could hold on to the rails, you came up the side, but, but a much higher walkway there, much uh, narrower as well. So. This obviously is the idea that this one would of course be your preferred option for accessing. So there incidentally that's your manual bilge pump. If your automatic ones would fail you merely take the handle off, put it into the little flap which is under there and then manually pump it up and down um, if your motorised uh, bilge is failed. And there's that side door I told you about um, which just on that little spring clip there opens up there and a really nice way to get in and out if you're uh, if you're alongside at your marina and wanted uh, and it's easier to get off the side there um, obviously some bits and bobs down the side here for uh, for some of your fishing kit and equipment um, this gate at the back here once you're underway just lift, lifts up and then locks back into place there um, so just from a safety point of view it's then uh, uh, you're not likely to end up falling out the back here. Um, 
And that, folks, is the 895 Sport. Hopefully I've got to most of the corners of it for you in, um, in the time we've got here at this um, lovely dealership. Uh, very good of Celia and the team here to allow us to film the 895 Sport and one or two others, which hopefully you might have seen also on the channel. Um, and we're very, very grateful to them uh, for allowing us to do so, because I know you guys love uh, having a good mooch around um, some of these Genos that uh, we've managed to, to get a look around. Well, we hope you enjoyed um, our review of the 895 Sport. What mm. a fantastic boat that is. We really enjoyed looking around it, mm. and um, we hope you did too. Yes, and of course, uh, big thanks to SFAS Power who uh, allowed us to do these uh, last couple of three reviews that you have hopefully watched. If you haven't found the others yet, have a look on the channel. And as always, guys, it's been great having you along. Thanks ever so much for watching, and we'll see you very soon. Indeed. Bye now. Bye, Bye. now.